Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at another method of solving systems of equations. This is known as the elimination method. And we'll take a look at the last example from the previous video. Uh, that is exercise 34 on page 486. And in elimination, your first step is going to be to identify a variable that you would like to eliminate. So again, we have a choice here. And the choice really doesn't matter, so pick the choice that's the easiest. What we're going to do is we're going to eliminate this variable by kind of combining the two equations. So in this case, I'm going to choose y because I think it's going to be the easiest. And the way you eliminate a variable by combining these two equations is, well, if I added these two equations together, what's going to result is adding a plus y with a minus y is going to give me zero y. It's, there's going to be no y's in the sum of these two equations. That's the idea, is to multiply the equations by whatever number you need to, add or subtract them, in order to eliminate a particular variable. So in this case, I'm going to do a bit of scratch work here. If we add equation 1 with equation 2, as I mentioned, this should provide a relatively simple way of obtaining the solution. Well, 2x plus 3x is 5x. I've already mentioned that plus x plus a minus x will cancel, give us 0x, and we're lazy, so we don't write 0 times something, because that's just 0. And 2 plus minus 7 is minus 5. So then we solve this equation to get that x equals minus 1. And once we have an answer here, we can back substitute again in this time either one of the original two equations to find out what x is. So if, say, we plug into equation 1, for example, 2 times minus 1, because we now know x is minus 1, plus y equals 2. Well, that's saying that minus 2 plus y equals 2. We'll have to add 2 to both sides to find that what we already knew from the previous video, that y is equal to 4. And while this is a new way of solving systems of equations, the old method of checking still works. All you have to do is plug minus 1 in for x, 4 in for y, and make sure that both equations are true. In other words, the method of solving the problem changed, but the problem itself hasn't changed. So the method of checking isn't going to change either. Now, just for the point of illustration in this video, this was a rather convenient way of eliminating variables. But let's say just hypothetically, what would it look like if I chose to eliminate x instead? Well, I'd think about what number goes nicely into both 2 and 3. Or rather, what number 
has factors of 2 and 3? Well, that would be 6. So I want to change one of these equations so that x appears as 6x and the other equation where x appears as being minus 6x. So let's say I multiply equation 1 by 3 and equation 2 by minus 2. Well then I'd get 3 times equation 1 would be 6x plus 3y equals 6 and then minus 2 times equation 2 is minus 6x plus 2y equals and that will be a plus 14. Then when I add these up, and this is why it's necessary to have them be a different sign, because when you add them up, 6x plus minus 6x will cancel, so we don't even have to write it down. And we've eliminated x from this new equation that we're going to create. Now, 3y plus 2y is 5y, and 6 plus 14 is 20. So this means that y is 4. And then we could go through the process of back substituting and figuring out that x is minus 1. Or you could repeat the elimination process and go back and eliminate y just as we did here, and find that x is minus 1. So you can completely avoid any and all substitution just by eliminating one variable at a time. And this is the idea of solving systems of equations through elimination.